Today we're talking about OEMs, or Original Equipment Manufacturer. What are these? Well, these are the companies that make the things for the people that sell the things. So for example, a company like Netronics is going to make the Sony DPT-S1. Sony didn't actually make the Sony DPT S1 way back in 2013 2014. Subsequently, for the DPT RP1, they went with a company called Linfony because they shop around and they say, Who has the shells we want? You have the shell we want. If you're a little bit confused, let's head over to the chalkboard and give you a lot of examples about where the industry stands when it deals with OEMs. If you want to know more about the supply chain and a little bit more about e-ink, you can check out the article that Michael and his team wrote at goodyreader.com's news publication. So let's just take Amazon for example. Undoubtedly, when you think of e-ink or e-paper or e-readers, you think of the Amazon Kindle. But where do they come from? Amazon doesn't stand around and make the Kindles. They don't have a production line that makes them. They actually use Foxconn. Foxconn is a company in China that actually makes the 6-inch shells, the Oasis shells, etc. And Amazon prints them out and puts their labeling and packaging and make it all pretty. Foxconn actually also makes one of the most popular consumer electronic devices in the world, the iPhone. Someone like Kobo, you might be wondering, where does Kobo get their stuff? Well, they actually get their things from Netronics. Netronics is a Taiwanese-based company that has production lines ready for different shells and different sizes and shapes. So for example, the heads at Kobo Rakuten would go over to the guys in Netronics and say, what do you have? Netronics would say, we have a six inch EPD, which is an electronic paper display in this type of shell with these type of things built in. Companies like Kobo and Tolino and even a whole bunch of others like King Jim, Moby Scride, Readmu, Moo Inc. and even Barnes & Noble all use Netronics to make the actual e-readers themselves. Linfony. We went to visit the Linfony booth in Tokyo, Japan, and they had some new shells ready for anyone with deep pockets to purchase and make production runs out of. They had a 10.3 and a 13.3. Quirk Logic and Fujitsu both grabbed the first gen of the 13.3. Fujitsu grabbed both the first and second gen of the 10.3 and the 13.3, and Sony grabbed the DPT RP1. They also have a color panel. Thus far, no one has gone to Linfony and said, I want the color panel. Onyx Books is a little bit of an odd man out because not only do they make their own retail available products, they are the OEM. In fact, other companies like Icarus and Storytel actually buy Onyx products and rebrand them into their own. A company like Pocketbook, you might think, well, Pocketbook's been around since 2011, they must make their own things. Well, actually, no, they don't. Jezetech, very famous in the e-reader world for making the Boy You Like Book series, actually also has a hand in making Pocketbook and Bokeen devices. Big Me is a relatively unknown set of circumstances. The Big Me, the Pine Note, the Goyu and the Bokeen Notia all use the exact same shell. Doing a little bit of a dive into their company, we haven't been able to find out who the OEM is. It could be any one of them, but they are all sharing the exact same products across the board. There's been a ton of buzz around the unknown triplets, and this includes the Whiskey, the Re-Ink Stone, and the Top Joy. They all seemingly use a lot of the same things, including the EPDs, Electronic Paper Displays, the same DES slurry displays, a lot of the same names. It's not 100% written in stone that they are coming from the same place, but any sort of investigation into the matter really shows that they pretty much are. Supernote is another unknown because nothing looks like a Supernote and Supernote doesn't look like anything else. But some reports say that they do some of their stuff in-house and outsource some of their stuff to an unknown OEM in China. 
However, if you notice, Supernote is a partner of the Digital Stationery Consortium, which includes members such as Wacom, Samsung, iFlyTech, E-Ink, Linfini themselves, and Lamy. Likely all of those companies do all of the same manufacturing at Linfini slash E-Ink's Chinese factory, but we can't 100% guarantee. Finally, the weirdest one of the bunch, Remarkable. Based in Norway, they've only been around for a couple years and only have two units under their belt, one of which is actually discontinued. The Remarkable 2 ran a staggered release campaign where people would pay for the devices and have to wait actually three to four months to get their things. So it was a little bit of a strange way they went about things. Remarkable also does not work with anyone else in the industry. Other than us, you will not find any other third party resellers than a few maybe eBay listings. Remarkable looks like nothing else on the market and nothing else looks like a Remarkable unit. Well, what if you don't want to deal with an OEM? What if you don't want to go to a big company that has all these production runs ready and have your stuff look like everyone else's stuff? Well, you actually can do stuff on your own. You can have your own production plants. You can have your own machines, your own conveyor belts and robot arms that put the things on the things. You can do all that yourself if you want, but it comes with a big, big price tag. Why is that? Because when you go to an OEM, they have everything ready. But if you do stuff yourself, you're going to have a completely unique product. And we have three big examples of what happens when you do stuff yourself. Number one, no more evident than the Guido. The Guido is a dual screen, 13.3 inch hinged e-ink device for professional musicians. It is completely built in Japan over a four year period and it costs $1,600 USD. That's a huge price tag, but nothing else is gonna look like it. Another example is the Dasung. The Dasung monitors and the not e-readers and the not readers, whatever you wanna call them, they're all built from the ground up, but they are to this date some of the most expensive consumer electronics in the e-reader world. The not reader 10.3, is $900 and it doesn't even have a note taking layer. The monitors range from $1,000 to $2,300. This is some huge money. The Progress Technologies E1 Manga Reader. It's a dual screen 7.8 inch hinged e-reader made out of real paper that looks like a book. It's $500 USD and it doesn't even come with anything. You then have to buy full licensed manga packs on an SD card, chuck it in the body, and that costs you another $400. So you're looking at sub $1,000 for the complete package. Now granted, you do get all the manga ever released in the entire series, but it just goes to show you that you're spending an arm and a leg and a few fingers on the other arm just to get this because they made it from the ground up. So that's why when you go to an OEM like Jezitech, you end up getting a $100 pocketbook e-reader. But then you make your own things like Dasung and you get a $900 e-ink tablet. So it really does come down to what you want as a company. And us as consumers, we know that you can go to an OEM and get something that looks like everyone else's stuff, or you can get something completely built from the ground up that a company made out of their own pocket, out of no other help and just built it up from themselves themselves, but you're going to pay a lot more money for it. And that's just the reality of the situation. Cell phone providers do this too. We told you earlier on the company that makes Kindles make iPhones. It's the same plant. It's the same production line, just with different robots doing different things. Hope this opens your guys' eyes as to what OEMs are. It, this exists in many different facets of the world, everything from clothing to cars, even food like brand name stuff and no name stuff that come from the same factory. If you guys have any other questions, let us know down below. For goodyreader.com, this is Peter.